Hello guys, uh, in this video I would like to explain about Mankandal test and, and the particular thing which I will do in this video is uh, trend analysis for multiple stations and multiple parameter at the same time in R and R studio. Uh, you will see that uh, we, we will perform this Mankandal test for multiple stations uh, that's depend how many station you have. That's no problem. Actually, I have say eleven station. You can have hundred or more, and maybe two hundred or something like that. Whatever is the number of your station, maybe thousand or whatever. You can do this only in a single. You know, you need to run a single code, and that will run this Mankandal test with different parameters, multiple parameters at the same time. I mean the results the the final results will be for all stations and multiple parameter while running a single code r code so we will see how let's move to the r and r studio that how we can do this we will explain each step step by step and then we will see that how the results are the output as look like uh, in addition, the code I'm using in this code, in this video, and the input data to this code and the output data from this course, all these things are available uh, online and the links to each of these, I mean to the code, to the input data and to the output data are given in the description of this video. You can just go click and you will see online data. So if you want to practice with my data, you can use the same code, you can use the same data, but you remember that you need to change the path where your data is stored on your computer because the path given is up on my laptop. Okay, so one thing, and remember that the code is code, that is okay, whatever the name is, the link will be given separately and the input data that is save, uh, input data to MKTest with this name, and the output data is output data mk test so you will see what is the output from this code and what are the input to this code you will see so let's move to r and you can use in r studio i'm using r studio you can use in r so let's see how we can do this this is divided into multiple steps and the first step is you need to use the required libraries if you have not installed already you can install uh, these libraries and you can use you can use our command to install multiple libraries at the same time I have done a separate video on this and If you are interested to install multiple libraries at the same time The link is given in the description of this video Just go click and watch that video and you will see how to install multiple libraries uh, and or I have already installed so I don't need to install and you need that these are some libraries which I'm loading here uh, that's mean libraries uh, open xlsx that will open excel file and then library candle this is for mkatest some of the tests in you know, a parameter you can test uh, with some function in this and then a library trends you can use this also for my candle test and library deployer that's very important library and this can reshape the data you can use you know change the data uh, in different shapes a library table and that is formatting there so these are important libraries you will see how we can use these libraries uh, and this uh, in this video so now the second step is uh, set the path or you can see read the excel file so you are not setting the path this file actually you are just uh, locating uh, in a file yeah that is file path actually file underscore path is here and you are just writing where the files are saved where the, the, the file you know the excel file this one is saved just look at this uh, this is from here to here that is monthly precipitation total baseline dot xlsx this is the file and this is the path so you just locate the path of the file where the path the file is saved you know the input file remember whereas the input file is saved to this or code and then you are reading this and that is stored in the df so just read dot xls file paths first just read from here from this path because it's stored in the path now and sheet one so that sheet one just write this click on this and you will see that is storing now in df so you can you can just look h e a d uh, that means the top values of this df file 
Yeah, that's very interesting. You can see here and here the number of stations. We have 11 stations. Look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can check this by DIM, D I M. And that will also give you the number of rows and columns, DIM, and then the, the data frame. So 360 by 12. So that means 12 columns. 12 column means one is for year and the remaining 11 are stations. You can count this because we have limited number of stations. If you have 1,000, 1,500 stations, then you cannot count. So just look, just use dim command. That will be that will give you R plus C rows and columns. Rows is R360 and columns are 12. So that will give you simply, you know, uh, you can count just the number of columns, the number of stations. Just subtract the first one because this is for your if you have uh, more columns for other things. Other than station, you can subtract those and then you will determine the number of stations. So I have 11 stations. So there is the second step. You have you have read the data and then uh, okay, drop your F uh, present. Okay, you can do this and you can see this one how this look like because each is you want you need to check. Okay, and now and um, you now the fourth step is initialize empty result list. You need to initialize the res, the result list that is empty, but then you store the data in the next step. You know, uh, here you are making still, and then you store the data from here. Run them in Kendall test. So just initialize the results here, the list result here, and then loop through each column because you have different you have different in you know, station just look at this this again you can write just click the right arrow key and you will see that one this one just look at this no it's not this one this one head okay so you have different stations so you just this this command you know this com the command at seven step will run for each column just look at this initialize and then loop through each column so this will go to each station that's all and okay there's some error let's see from where the error is okay Okay, I did not run already, you know, this one, so that's created the error. I need to run this uh, to initialize the result list because I have not initialized and then that's are using here in some way. So then they say, okay, what well, it is, so it's not found. So you need to run this first and then this, this, will, this will go to each column for each station. It will visit each station, uh, that's each column mean each station and then remove any if there exists, you remove the any from each series if that is exist and then uh, run mk and since log test so you can see mk you are running this mkndal this is the function you know and series mean the series that each station it will go to and since log that is going also to each station and then and step add you can see uh, results now you are storing the results so results, you are storing the table command is used here. You can see how the table uh, command work. Series is column name and then tau, that is mk dot tau is coming from mk and tau and then p value, the p value of k and then slope, the sin slope and then the lower confidence interval and upper confidence interval for uh, the sin slope. So you can see you have five values, tau, p value, sin slope and lower and upper confidence interval for uh, the sin slope estimator. So this is the result list is now. And now um, in the nine, nine step, combine all the results. So you can now combine the results by bench rows, result underscore list. So this is the result list is now we have results and you can using this command to combine this. And that is stored now in monthly results. Just click on this. And if you want to see, you can see HEAD or and monthly results. Monthly, yeah, that's on the top. So you can just look at this. Yeah, you can see this. That's look nice. And that is series, I mean the station, and then tau, candle tau. Uh, this, uh, you know, the interpretation. I have done separate videos, three videos. One is 
uh, the general background and general uh, you know um, the, the the theory about Menkan artist and then I have done Menkan artist in R and Python. So if you are interested, you can see those videos as well on this channel. Uh, the links are given to this in the description of this video to each of those videos. And particularly the first video is important for you people to see the theory because if you don't know about uh, the Kandal Tau, how you will interpret, so you need to know about that. That is explained in one of those videos. And then p value as given here, and then slope, sin slope, and then confidence interval of uh, you know lower confidence interval and upper confidence interval for the sin slope estimator. So this is the result now. Seven monthly results now. Uh, you can you can print now this results. Yes, I have done already. You can do like this. So you you can see like this. Now the important thing is you you need to save the results in Excel file or CSV file, whatever you like. So I'm saving this in the csv file so you need to write that csv and monthly results that's the results the file which have the results like here here just write this and then just write the path where you want to store the data so i'm writing this path and look at this and at the end i'm writing the file name like this one that is monthly precipitation total trend under and uh, dash zero dot csv just look at the, the just look at the uh the directory where i'm working this is my working directory and there is no such type of file with this name just look at the name this name you will save this now in this directory and you will see this file in this there will be this file will be generated just click and you can see there is no errors this means this file is generated of course this file is generated and that's as located here Okay, now open this file and you will see how the output look like and how you can interpret the output. That's more important. Okay, just open this. Okay, there's okay, so problem. Okay, I will open it again. Just click on this and you will see how the results look like. This is the input file, remember. The, the other file is opening now. Okay, so this is open now. So this is the file, uh, you know, in which you have stored the data. Just look at this. Look at this. These are series. Uh, so these are the titles, I mean, the heading. These are the different, you know, the series, or you can say the station names. And this is Kendall Tau for each station, you know, or, you know, and this is the p-value for each of these. And this is sin slope estimator. Just look at this. These are precipitation. So precipitation, total precipitation. So there is possibly no trend. That's that's obvious. And the trend here is also very weak. So look at this. And then these are the lower confidence interval and the upper confidence interval for the sin slope estimator. So you can see how we can do the things. We can do multiple things. What we have done, we have done uh, this man can dial test for more station more than one station i mean you can use map you can use of course thousand station 1500 station i have only 11 stations so you can you can use this uh you can learn in this video that how you can run man can dial test with multiple parameter like you can see tau p value uh, with their p value and then sensor of estimator and then their lower and upper conversion interval and for multiple multiple station at the same time in single R code you can do this very easily okay uh, so these uh, i will think this i mean the input data the output data and the r code are available online you can go and you can practice and then you can apply on your own data and if you have any question write me in the comments please Okay, uh, so what we have done in today's video, we have learned in today's video that we can use many conduct test uh, with multiple parameter and uh, apply on multiple sites, multiple logical station at the same time. So that's very obvious uh, that this is a multiple advantages of this test. And uh, of course, this is the beauty of all that you can implement you can implement many condal test with multiple parameter and multiple station at the same time so that's make you know the things very easy and save the time so i think this is enough for today and see in the next video